the South Carolina General Assembly has come to an end. In this special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, I speak exclusively with Representative Lynn Bennett, who's serving her first year as state representative. Well, Lynn, it is so good to see you again. Quentin, it's always great to see you, buddy. Like one of my favorite people in the world. Oh, thank you. I appreciate this. You're welcome. So here we sit here in downtown Charleston, and you just left uh, the downtown Columbia just a day ago. And Charleston is much prettier. <laughs> And speaking of Columbia, I want to take you back to your Facebook page. You said the following on May 9th. You said this quote, we really could use your prayers this week, unquote. Tell me, when you think of the South Carolina General Assembly, what were you praying for? That we would make the right decision. I, at the time that I do that, I knew we would be dealing with the conference report that had just come out on the right. gas bill. Oh, yeah. um, and although I had an idea of what was in it, I didn't, hadn't read it yet. Mm. Um, so I was glad to finally get there and... and talk to people and understand what had gone on. But I knew that for many people, the decision was going to be difficult. The decision for me was difficult mm. to make. Um, we need a gas tax increase, okay. I, regardless of what people say. What I didn't like about the final, the first gas tax okay. bill in the House was that I didn't think the reforms that they had put in there were strong enough and clear enough to be followed. Mm. Um, but after it came out, but after the Senate bill came out, um, it had no reforms in it. It was totally gas and fee related with things that have nothing to do with road maintenance in it. And when they finally did the conference report, they picked up our reforms and made them a little stronger. I was pleased to see that. Mm. But what I wasn't pleased to see was the extra stuff that was tacked on the what I call vote buying scheme, schemes, earned income tax credits, college tuition credits. I mean, those are all nice things, but they need to be addressed outside of a bill that's supposed to be solely concentrated on maintaining our crumbling roads. Mm. And um, I'm sure that was in there because somebody wanted it, and that was how they were able to get their vote. That's usually how it works. You know, if you vote for this, I'll give you that kind wow. of a thing. And um, it's just a shame. As it turns out, from what I understand, I keep reading the bill, right. the 12 cents that we are collecting is going to go into a trust fund. And that money will be used only for roads maintenance, only for repairing our roads. All of that will be online, so it'll be transparent. Sure. You'll get to see who gets what contracts, for how much, where the director will put together a priority list, what needs to go first, not based on where some representative or senator lives, it's based on the roads that need repairs. I think those are good things for us. Mm. However, all the fee increases that we're going to be getting are going to that fluff stuff that was attached on. Oh. The, um, you know, the tax credits for everybody. And my problem with, with that, I including, one of the things that they did include was a fee for people with hybrid cars. They use our streets. Sure. You know, and they should help us maintain them. But that's not going into road maintenance. That's going into the fee pot, the fee pot that's paying for all the extra stuff. And I think that's probably very good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But it just needs not, it's not germane to the bill that we were trying to pass. Mm. So based on that, I just couldn't support it. Let me take you to DeVito. Watch.com, you know, Watch mm -hmm. Fox in Columbia says this quote, as promised, Governor Henry McMaster has vetoed a gas tax bill that raises taxes in order to fix the state roads. The original Republican took to his Twitter page to announce his reasons for vetoing the bill, stating that the bill, quote, places great burden on South Carolina's working families, young workers, and senior citizens. Is that right? I think the fees probably could. Um, the first year, it's going to be 40 cents a tank. You're not going to notice it. Right. You're not going to notice it. But I think, you know, driving the registration free, they no longer have a tax because I couldn't do a tax without voter right. support. So it's a fee now. Mm -hmm. 300 to 500, um, increasing a lot of other little things that were in there. I think it's a good idea that people that buy cars out of state and right. now bring them in so they don't have to pay our tax will now have to pay wow. a registration fee. Wow. I mean, they use our roads. Right. That's what that money, it's unfortunate that these fees aren't going to go into road maintenance. No. So maybe we didn't need these fees in the first place. It, and the governor's statement was misleading and disappointing. Okay. Twice the governor has gone outside of the legislature mm. 
to ask for additional money to fix our roads. First, he went to the federal government right. and asked for $5 billion, and the federal government said no. Then he came to us and wanted to do a $1 billion bond bill. Well, that's a one-time fix. I would fix the roads one, one time. It would, there would be no recurring maintenance okay. happening under that. And we, the taxpayers, would be paying this billion-dollar bond bill back for 20 years. So there's nothing in there that would cause it to... So he acknowledges that there is no money in the 16.75 cents that we get currently to cover all of the maintenance needs that we now have. Um, so, And it's not like we haven't tried to talk to him. Okay. Um, he says money goes to agencies. Well, yeah. Which agency do you want to cut? Department of Agriculture who measures? You know, they're responsible for measures and weights to make sure that gas stations are pumping you a good gallon and not less than a gallon. Right. You want to take that away? Fine. Tell the people. We don't need this anymore, and we'll just trust the gas station owners to make sure their gas pumps are properly certified. Um, DHEC, which does CDL right. certification. Do we want to let people drive trucks without proper training and a CDL license? Um, Department of Motor Vehicles sucks up a lot of that agency money. We need a DMV. But if you, and I've seen little things in there we could take out, but it's nowhere near what we're going to need to actually fix these roads. And they're so minuscule mm. that they really don't make, I, every penny counts, I sure. agree. But um, I just couldn't see, because that's my first question. Being a brand new right. representative up there, so let me see where you're spending this money. And they broke it all, they were great. They said, here it is. And they broke it all down. And Grant and I could see, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? But it wasn't enough money to make up the balance of what we needed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a great awakening. But I, when I ran for office, I never said I was against a gas tax. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to make sure was that whatever tax we came up with was properly spent on what we were collecting it for. And we've actually done what I was concerned we would do, collect people's money and not spend it properly. Wow. You talk about a couple of departments that could be eliminated. How about the Department of Transportation and moving that towards the governor? That was another, that was one of the reforms I was really for. I wanted the um, DOT to be a cabinet level secretary for decision, reporting directly to the governor, thereby removing all of that political influence that comes from commissions and SIBs right. and things like that. The governor didn't want that. The governor wanted a commission. Um, but he would appoint all the commissioners, one from the seven districts and then two at large, and he would appoint the chairman of the board, and he says, then I'll be responsible for whoever I appoint. And I'm sure that would be the case. It would just be a lot smoother and cleaner and quicker to not have to go through nine people. Um, one of the good things they did, though, is remove them from the day-to-day decision-making that should be made by the DOT. So right. that's good. Sure. They did that with the SIB, too. Okay. The SIB can no longer get involved with the priorities that the DOT needs. The SIB is truly now just supposed to be a funding mechanism, which was what it started out to be. It was there to help us build things like the Ravenel right. Bridge, new projects, not to tell the DOT what projects they want built. Um, and it just got out of control. I think under this, I mean, there's a tempt under this bill to pull, rein all that in mm. and make it cleaner and smoother. And I'm not disappointed with it. I'm, I just hope they stick to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. I find the government does always stick to what they say they're going to stick to. Let me turn to Governor McMaster. Obviously, a lot of your fellow colleagues are basically saying he's campaigning more than governing. Yes. I can't disagree with him on that. He wants to be around. This is his dream. I've known Henry for a long time. He's a good man. He's got a good heart, and he's a sweetheart. He has always wanted to be governor of South Carolina. Always, since I've known him. That's been his dream. Mm -hmm. Now, we all have one. Right. So he's living his dream, and I'm excited for him for doing that. But he's got to cut back on the campaigning. I know he's up for election. Next year? Yes. Yeah, Anything next year. Um, we still need a governor. We still need someone to govern and lead. He's the boss. You know, if there are things in DOT that he doesn't like or he thinks can be done better, come to us with a restructuring plan. We will certainly work with you on that. We're with you. 
we're with you on that. But don't tell us after we've tried to work with you that the things that we were doing was wrong because we couldn't get your support. We couldn't get your support on a secretary cabinet level position. Um, I am not a fan of commissioners and committees and boards. Mm -hmm. I think that too many of them get in the way of progress because most of them are politically appointed and the governor is a political person. How, how am I going to really feel comfortable that whoever the representative is from Lexington County isn't pushing for roads that might benefit the governor? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know that. But the pressure's there. The pressure's there for all of them. When, when Jay Lucas and, and Hugh Leatherman appointed people, the pressure was there. These people, people like serving on these boards. They don't know why. They don't pay you very much. Okay. You know, they really, they pay your travel expenses and I think you get 35 bucks a meeting okay. and they only meet once a month. Wow. But, but I have learned that the power to be able to control something is sometimes more attractive than the actual money you get for doing it. Okay. You can see that with 124 House representatives and 46 senators. <laughs> we don't get paid a lot of money to go up there and do this. Right. You know? <laughs> well, speaking of the General Assembly, when you look back to January 11th to right now, what letter grade would you give your fellow colleagues? Overall, I'd give them an A-. I, I think that even though I disagree with some things that come up, I think that everybody up there is trying to do the right thing. Sometimes we just disagree on how to get there and what the final product should look like. Sure. Um, but I, I don't think that, you know, there's always one or two that, you know, they're in, they have their own interests. That's just human nature. Sure. But I think when we're talking about bills or debating bills or discussing something that's big and important, I, I really think they want to get the answer right. Now, do we? No, we don't always get it right. But I think they really want the right answer in the long run. I don't care which side of the aisle you sit on. They want, they really do want to do good. They don't, you know, we're, we find that there are people that don't want to do good. I mean, that just happens. That's just human nature. Wherever you go, you're going to find people that have their own special interests in mind. But I think the majority of them really want to do the right thing for the people of South Carolina and the people that live in their districts. Let me go back to that again, the question I just asked you. January 11th to now, what is it like now to be Lynn Bennett, the state representative, in your first year? Where is your mind right now? Right now my mind's trying to relax. <laughs> after, after five months in the state house, it was very interesting. I, you know, I spent a lot of time, there, there was always legislation that sure. I was interested in working on, and I'd go up there, I'd sit in the balcony and watch what's going on, and I'd run down and talk to people, right. you know, about things. Um, but I was never there on the floor in the sausage factory, wow. so to speak. So being there was a big lesson learned. I had no idea what goes on down there. Um, how the rules work. That, that's my biggest thing this year, so I want to learn how, but you want to get something done? Know the rules. Otherwise, you don't get anything done. You need to know how to get it through the rules process. Are the rules archaic? Probably, but they are what they are. Mm -hmm. um, so you can whine about them or you can learn them and figure out how to do anything. Today, I have a greater respect for what goes on down there than I did before. It was easy to be critical right. because I didn't have all the information that you get when you're down there, and you don't get to hear from all the people that you get to hear from when you're down there. Um, I'm honored. I'm humbled. When I walk into this chamber right. of this 100, 200-year-old place, right. it just takes my breath away. The history. I'm a history buff anyway. The history in this room is just, you can feel it. You can feel it going all the way back. All the great people that have been in this room making decisions for the people of South Carolina sure. is overwhelming. I mean, I'm sitting at a desk that's 200 years old. Right. You know? Oh, wow. Let me take you to the next legislative session. I know that you, along with a couple of colleagues, didn't get the bills that you wanted to pass. No, so, that what happens. Is, yeah. What is that one bill that still plays in your mind that you said that I got to get done? The dismemberment abortion bill. Um, I had bipartisan support in the House from Democrats and Republicans. Wow. Basically, all this bill does, it doesn't take away abortion. I live in the real world. I understand that it's the law of the land for now. Right. I don't know if it'll ever change. I pray that hearts will change about it. Um, but this, all this did was provide a humane procedure for dismembering a child before you removed the child from the mother's room. 
and we just ask doctors to basically euthanize. That's what we're doing. We're euthanizing an unborn child before that child has actually had its little arms and legs ripped off so it can be removed. It's a horrible, horrible procedure. And they do feel pain. It's a known that after 11 weeks they feel pain. This pressure, this procedure is done weeks 12 through 24. It's a second trimester procedure. What was interesting to me was when we were fighting partial birth abortion, right. the um, abortion industry was telling us that this was a dangerous procedure this um, dismemberment abortion was more dangerous than partial. Now all of a sudden it's a safe procedure. Um, and, and I can't understand the concept of an individual that would want to harm another individual like this. I just, whether it's for money or not, these are unborn children. They look like babies. You can talk to abortion doctors, they'll tell you. When they take pieces out, it's an arm. It's not something that looks like a fish. It's a baby's arm or a baby's leg or a baby's head. You know, this is a little human being that just all it needs is a mother's uterus for nine months just to grow in the womb to be able to sustain itself. I, and I just, there's nothing, there's, I just don't understand. That's all I can say. I don't understand why you would want to purposely inflict pain that isn't necessary to inflict. And that was all I was asking. I'm not taking your procedure away from you. Right. I'm just asking you to take the pain away from these children that you are going to abort. Representative Lynn Bennett, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. You know, it's always a pleasure being with you. Likewise. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>